Hi, I'm Rocco Steno and welcome to Storymakers. Today I have my hands full with a few books by Tim, our guest, Tim Fedley. Hey Tim, just a few books <laughs> I here. I love it. Yeah, so your first book came out in 2013 and here today I have two hands full of your books. Was there a plan? Was this part of it? a huge plan that you had in mind? The world domination plan? No, the, I think the plan was just to get published. That uh -huh. was the idea. So when the first book came out, I kind of had a dream of, oh, of branching book. into other, yes, that, transition. Yes, that. Better that Nate than, than ever. ever. Yeah. In 2013, mm -hmm. so when this first book came out. I had an idea that it could potentially have a sequel, but I did not at that point think I would write, you know, cocktail books or other things, so. Well, many people do know that before you became a middle grade author, you had uh, some time in show business. So tell us a little bit about that. I did. Um, I started performing as a little kid, which is sort of like Nate's story. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I moved to New York City when I was, I think, 19 years old to, uh, well, the dream was to dance on Broadway. At first, I was like, I danced on a halftime show at the Super Bowl. I danced on Radio City Christmas Spectacular as a dancing polar bear. Did you see that show? Uh, well, I thought it was a Santa Claus, but you know, you were... I was, a, well, everyone in the show is a Santa Claus oh, at one point, because oh, there's like a okay. hundred, spoiler alert, there's like a hundred dancing Santas. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I was mostly a dancer in the background. And then eventually I was in Gypsy on Broadway, a bunch of shows. And then about um, five years ago, I, I sort of got this idea to start writing. So Better Nate Than Ever became a very autobiographical sort of kid in show business sort of book. Yeah, so your first book uh, received a, a Stonewall honor from the American Library Association, mm -hmm. and it also was nominated for a Lambda, a Lammy, a Lambda Literary Award, mm -hmm. better known yep. as Lammy. A Lammy, so Lammy right, to Friends. Right. Yes, and you know, some people may say that you are the uh, LGBT voice of middle grade. Uh, oh wow! Uh, uh, I'll middle take grade, that. Yes, and and there's a couple of us. James Howe is mm -hmm. doing good stuff. Always Jim Howe. Right. You receive uh, letters from kids. I mean, the amazing thing about writing books for kids these days is that so many of your readers aren't kids. Mm -hmm. So I receive tons of letters from sort of. Um, people you wouldn't necessarily think to hear from. I, I get letters from 40, 50, 60 year old gay men who say I wish I'd had this character when I was a kid. But the letters from the students themselves are really moving. I just received one the other day that I posted on my Facebook page with the name redacted of course. That just from students who write to say, you know, whether it's that they are going through a sort of LGBT identity experience or even they just feel different, which so many middle schoolers do. Uh, they write to say, I'm so glad I found this book. They very frequently find it in their library, which I think is really cool. And they write to say, uh, please keep writing books that feature characters who are sort of everyday heroes mm -hmm. and not necessarily wearing a cape, but they're wearing who they are on their sleeve, which I think is inspiring to people who, like me, maybe come from a town where it's not necessarily the most popular thing to be fill in the blank. You know, right. in my town it was like you were either a football star or you were nobody is how it felt to me. But it's not always like that. But, but you know, I think kids find their way to books like mine when they need to read about everyday people who, who maybe act in extraordinary ways. And yeah, some people may say that the uh, Nate book uh, inspired like a, like a, a new genre of uh, oh, wow. uh, uh, theater or showbiz kid books. But you know, um, five, six, seven, eight, which is a. You, know, you have to say it with jazz hands, Rocco. Oh, okay. Five, six, seven, seven eight, eight is okay. really the proper. Let's do that one more time. Yeah. Five, five six, six, seven, seven eight. eight is how you do that one. Okay. okay. Sorry, Great. keep going. I don't want to interrupt. Yes. Well, five, six, seven, eight, this book was nominated for a Lammy this year. Congratulations. Thank you. And it features a um, middle grade boy boy kiss. You know, and I, it's not really a spoiler alert because it's been I've written about, I know I've written about it for School Library Journal. And, uh, and actually, School Library Journal said great things about this book, about the series, too. Mm. What did, I'm sure you haven't memorized. What did they say? They said something like it's one of the best new middle grade series, but you'd have to look it up. You will that. have to confirm that, yes. Uh, but there's also been like some negative mm -hmm. reaction mm -hmm. to the uh, Nate books. Uh, you know, because you visit many schools. I do, yeah. Yes, and occasionally, uh, I know for a fact that on occasion, uh, invitations have been uh, withdrawn. Is that correct? Yeah, you know, over the last couple of years, I've probably visited 
it's like somewhere like 20,000 kids because I've done a couple of big like theater kid conventions. Mm -hmm. So I've met thousands now. And I would say that the overwhelming majority, even from these teachers from very small towns that maybe 10 or 15 years ago wouldn't have responded to, to a book that maybe pushed some of the limits in terms of uh, the open-mindedness about sexuality, they've been incredibly supportive. And I would say most of my visits, the teachers are completely comfortable with the fact that these two boys in, in the book kiss. Uh, but you're right, there have been occasional schools that have pulled out of visits at the last minute. I know exactly why. Sometimes they put it right in the email and they say, you know, we love your book and we think it's really funny, but we're afraid the parents are going to revolt. And that's always a shame, I think, because I hear from a lot of teachers who say things like, we don't really think we need to carry this in our, not a lot, but I hear from some who say, we don't know if we need to carry this in our library because we don't have any kids like that. And I always want to say, well, do you have any wizards? Because the truth is, you first of all do have kids like that mm -hmm. because it's just sort of a biological fact. Right. And second of all, all kinds of kids deserve all kinds of stories. And I, you know, as a student, read about the black experience, not often enough, by the way, but I also would have benefited from reading about the LGBT experience, even if I didn't identify as that, because that's called opening minds, and that's about escaping into another universe and developing empathy. You have another role. I mean, there is five, six, five, six, seven, eight. That's yes, really good. But, that was it. Uh, that was the one. Is... You get a call back now. Yes. Oh, terrific. But you actually do the audiobooks yeah. uh, for so that's like a whole nother well your experience because you're an actor better Nate than ever uh, received an Odyssey honor and mm -hmm. so did five six seven Nate so tell me about doing audiobooks is it uh, like acting or is it different well it's really fun to narrate your own because you just sort of like wake up and put on sweatpants and head in the booth because you know where all the jokes are you know where the audience is supposed to cry if they're gonna cry um, so it was a joy, and as a, as a little kid, I did a lot of um, narration oh. of like commercials, so I like sold lots of toys in Pittsburgh. Uh, I had to interview Barbie in a toy commercial once, which the other kids at school like to make fun of me about. <laughs> so to, to narrate my own books and then have them get recognized by the librarians was really meaningful. And I hear from a lot of families, actually, that listen to the books like on road trips, road which trips, is really right. cool. And I did, like my parents, my family, we listened to Meryl Streep's famous narration of the Velveteen Rabbit mm -hmm. um, when I was a little kid. So I love being part of that tradition. Besides these two mm -hmm. books, you're also narrating another book, uh, Stonewall. I did, I just narrated Anne Bossom's Stonewall, which is the first ever nonfiction account of the Stonewall riots in the 60s for a exclusively young adult audience. And so I got to sit in the booth and kind of, frankly, get my mind blown open by some of the facts of that mm -hmm. era. It's a brilliantly written account of a really pivotal role in the civil rights crusade that we're still you know, trying to get right. I understand there's a YA book in the future. There is. Uh, Simon & Schuster's publishing my first YA out spring 2016. It's called The Great American Whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited about that. Excited to find a new audience and then hopefully also carry some of my middle grade audience That's right. a little bit. Yes. Yeah. So The Great American Whatever, can you just give us a little, little line or two yes. about what it's about? Kidlit TV is breaking the story. Yeah. I've never really talked about this. It's, uh, it is about a student filmmaker, a kid who lives in Pittsburgh, again going back to my hometown, who is obsessed with old movies, and the book begins six months after his collaborator and older sister has actually been killed, spoiler alert, in a terrible accident. Oh. And so this character, Quinn, is sort of coming to terms with who he is as a filmmaker. He also meets a boy this week, which is his first time ever doing that. And yet it's also funny, which I have to find a way to maybe talk about right. that more effectively. But yeah, so it's all of those things. It's a week in the life of. In your Nate books, uh, mention many Broadway <laughs> uh, musicals. I do, yeah. Yes, and so I'm assuming that you'll be mentioning many old films. Old and movies and also Quinn in, in The Great American Whatever. I had him sort of see sections of the book in a screenplay format, mm -hmm. which is a very specific bulletin. So he begins to sort of see the world again through the lens of somebody who, who wants to make movies, which I hope is a effective device for the audience. We'll see what the critics say. So 2016, spring of 2016. 2016. 2013 to 2015, and we mentioned that all your different projects. 
you must have some uh, kid-lit mentors. So I thought you were going to say you must have some kids who work for you. <laughs> yes. And I little, do. Little no, I don't. Yes. Small team of mentor. Absolutely. Well, first of all, oh, there's so many. David Levithan uh -huh. has broken down so many doors as a writer, and I think he's still just completely at the top of his game. He's an amazing writer. Um, I love everything Rebecca Stead writes. Mm -hmm. uh, I love Judy Bloom still. Uh, Elliot Schrafer is, right. a, is a friend and mentor, and I think he's an incredible writer no matter what he touches. Tons of writers. Um, Jason Reynolds, whose debut just got so much attention at Simon & Schuster. Yes. I think he's really special. So there's a lot, I mean, I'll think of, the minute we yell cut, cut. I'm gonna think of a billion more. And, and all those other people. And all those other people. Yes. So you are uh, sort of an expert in social media. I mean, I, I, I says, don't know. Says you? Says okay, me. I, I mean, love that. Yes. No, uh, Raves Rocco Steno, I'm gonna put that it. on my website. Yes, so, um, well, you're active. Let's just I'm say, active. you're active. I'm, I'm in, delaying deadlines, yes, but I uh, love that. I'm active. gonna start telling my editor I'm an expert. I yes, love that. Yes, and I'm selling books by, yes. Yeah. Uh, School Library Journal says it's really effective. That's yes, I'm yes. Say. So how much time do you actually spend on social media? It <laughs> no, seems like you're question. there all, all the, the time. time. I mean, I'm on there a lot. I will say my, pro my process, I hate that word, process, but my process when writing a new novel is I wake up around like 7.30 or 8 in the morning, mm -hmm. and I usually write for three hours, and I don't go online. I try really hard to like not get up from my chair other than to get more coffee. And so my social media presence, you, I, I guess, is sort of more of an escape when I'm editing, when I'm about to go on tour and dreading all the airports, or when I'm like trying to avoid the rest of my life. Uh, but of course, then the funny thing is, like Sarah Dessen is a hero of mine. Sarah Dessen's on Twitter all the time, and she, of course, famous Sarah Dessen, huge selling YA author. She's on there being incredibly transparent about her life, the ups, the downs, and I think she has shown me and a lot of people set the example for this, that you can be on social media and not just be trying to sell your book. You can actually use it to connect to people. And in that regard, I meet people now all the time in Kidlit where I feel like we have a relationship and I go, have we actually ever met? Because that's what the internet does these days, which is a great thing. Right, and you're actually making your mother a star on social media because you kind I of do. <laughs> retweet her messages. And she does a lot of really choice, like she texts me and then I'll like screenshot it and she'll write me later and go, well, I guess I'm on Twitter today. And that's it. Yeah. So, yeah, so we all want to meet your mom. You could tell She's her great. That. Yes. Mom's great. She'll, she, she'll appear in my mentions, I'm sure. <laughs> You're a debut picture book author with uh, Tommy Can't Stop. Yes. And now, can't stop what? I, is, that a, exactly. is that a, a spoiler? Yeah, is that a spoiler alert no. if we talk about? I mean, it's only like a 30-page book, so yes, you, can't, you yes, can't spoil yes, too much. Yes. So, he can't stop bouncing off the walls, which is how what I was like as a kid. In those days, we didn't call it ADD in the mm -hmm. 80s. We just called it, you know, Tim, shut up upstairs. Uh, so Tommy is really uh, Tim as a young boy. <laughs> Timmy. No, Tommy is sort of inspired by my mentor, Tom Schumacher, uh -huh. who is a, a producer at Disney. We worked together on Little Mermaid, and he really encouraged my writing. But Tommy is like every kid who you see, you know, they're jiggling their knee, and they're bouncing on the subway, and they sort of drive their family nuts sometimes, even though they're lovely and adorable children, as I hope I was. And so the idea behind this book was, I really came into my own when I discovered dance class. So I don't know, did you have something like this as a kid that was like a weakness somewhere, but a strength somewhere else? Uh, you're interviewing sure, me. Sure, why <laughs> not? We're here. <laughs> I'll have to think about that. Yeah, I mean, I, for me, I was always bouncing off the walls, and it wasn't until they put me in dance class that I went, oh, the things that get me in trouble one place mm -hmm. kind of get me um, attention in a good way somewhere else. So that was the sort of idea behind this book. And so he uh, becomes a... He becomes a tap dancer. A yeah, tap, tap lesson. lesson. Right. And, and he actually discovers that everything in his normal life that is like, I'm going to, sh we might, I maybe even show you a couple of these oh, moves. Well, I hope so. But a couple of, like some things that he does in his living room, it's the exact same move, but if you put it in tap shoes and put him in a dance class, suddenly it becomes like a, like a real move, like a real dance move. So that right. was the idea. Yes. So the book is illustrated by uh, Mark Fearing. Mark Fearing from yes. Portland. And Great. Yeah, so you must have a favorite illustration. I do. Yes, uh, show us. My favorite illustration is this page. Um, is a page where everybody takes a turn tiring Tommy out, and his older sister, who's driven the most bonkers by him, stands on a little step stool in the kitchen and writes down all these ideas for tiring Tommy out, including 
jumping jacks on the trampoline and encourage Tommy to run away. Uh, and that illustration just cracks me up. But there's also this dog that sort of follows Tommy, the whole book that, that tickles me. Mark does a really great job in all of his books of taking you know, kids and, and giving them really interesting looks. And he always illustrates lots of diversity. And it was really fun to work with him. When I was a kid, you asked, no. Yeah. When I was a kid, I always wanted to learn the piano. But my parents said, you could learn any instrument but the piano. What? Can Who you says that? that? So put me on a couch. But anyway, yeah, exactly. I, uh, Please. I actually uh, consider myself a good uh, dancer, but I've never actually ever. Them sound like fighting words. Yes, but I've never tap danced. Okay, we should do a couple of these moves though. Sure. If we're here. Oh, you're already up. Go. Uh, I'm ready. You go. I'm going to sit. No, I'll stand. You've already got the moves. What are we even talking about? Okay, we're going to do a couple moves from the book. So okay. the first is I want you just to kind of bounce like a pogo stick on one foot. Just nice and easy. Just like that. So we call, and it keeps going. We call that um, a, hop a hop in tap. A kid that. might think they're just bouncing. It's a hop in tap. Very, My knee knows a yeah, hop. You, what your knee, yeah, your knee thinks it's something entirely different. Uh, uh, the, the not hopping would be going to another foot. So go from your right foot to your left foot and just land. Okay. Good, you add a little something which I loved. Good, now it's 42nd Street. That's called a leap. Call okay. that a leap, I'm and ready. then and then we gotta get you in a show, <laughs> and then we'll do like two other little moves. Um, I want you to, to kick like you're kicking a soccer ball, or for me oh. it was kicking like my GI Joes down the street. Yeah, if you don't do it with your heel, we call it like from the side we call that a brush, brush exactly. And then the last move that appears <laughs> in the book is um, stamp your feet like this. Yeah, put a little more weight into it like you're angry. That looks like. Yeah, perfect. And we call that a stamp. Well, I got one more move. You're gonna, na you're gonna nail this. No, you're gonna get it. We're just gonna go one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, five, go. Yeah, you got the end. You got the end. You nailed the end. Hey, thanks for being here. Tim. Thank you, Rocco. Yeah, and you know what? Remember, until next time, give a kid a book in any format. So okay. if you go from one foot to the other, we call it a leap. And in my book, he calls it like, I'm a gazelle or I'm an antelope. That's what it kind of looks like for a kid to do it. But for you, it's I'm, <laughs> I'm, yeah, a, I'm, 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 I'm suing Tim Fetterly.